Even John MacArthur believes this, and we're found righteous. It's because of our faith in Jesus Christ, who through grace was revealed to us as the Son of God, saying that you must have works to accompany that faith in order to be saved, doesn't discount the faith, and it doesn't discount Jesus. It's founded upon it and permeated by it. We're going to hear about what Jesus said about getting clean. All right? Now, when you talk to a Christian in the church, churches, they will often quote this to you as an excuse for not stopping their sin. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, I just had a man who made a comment that said, oh, it doesn't say cleanse us from our sins. It doesn't say that in the Bible. It says cleanse us from unrighteousness. So I just backed up a couple of verses in verse 7, and I quoted it to him. I said, um, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And it's the same word for cleanse there. It's to purge. It's not to wash like wipe and wipe it off. It's to purge, which means to expurgate, to get it out. So there's none of it, not just on the surface, but inside. And we'll find out that that's exactly what it means because Jesus made that distinction here in Matthew 23. And you'd be wise to pay attention. Matthew 23, 25. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, and inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, and the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribe and Pharisee, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. All right, let's talk about these woes here that I've just quoted to you because it turns it on its head when they come along and say that, well, no one can be righteous by what they do. You cannot do anything that is righteous, and, and the only way that you can be made righteous is when Jesus imputes his righteousness upon you. That word was invented by Erasmus during the Reformation. He's not even a Protestant reformer. He was a Catholic who sided with the Protestants but would never leave the Catholic Church. He stayed Catholic, but he was favorable towards their cause. So he invented this, this kind of translation of this word into a word imputed. Okay. But that's not what the Scriptures say. Now, when they say that, well, I can't become righteous inside, you know, that book of 1 John gives all the answers right there alone. But when you combine it with what Jesus said back here in Matthew, they're rebuked. 1 John 3, 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. Listen again, because there are so many of you who hear this and they say, oh, he's preaching works salvation and run away and then start writing bad things about me on the internet or making videos against me, hate videos. Oh, he's a works righteousness preacher. No, I'm a Bible preacher. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Bible says that you're wrong. Bible says you're going to hell because you hold a heresy. You reject the testimony of God, and you'd better return to it and back it up. Support what it says here, because it says right here, he even starts with this, Little children, let no one deceive you. On this point, men will want to deceive you. He says it very clearly. This is one point in the Bible where men will try to deceive you. And God put this here for our benefit even now, 2,000 years later. 
Because through all this time, men have tried to deceive you. Making you think that there's some other way to be righteous other than doing what is right. Listen to it again. This is God's words. It's not mine. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. Just as he is righteous, exactly as he is righteous. And we see that in 1 John 1, 7. He says, if we walk in the light, two verses before he says, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, it says so right here. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, with no darkness at all, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Walking in light, walking in darkness. Jesus said that men hate the light and love the darkness because their actions are evil. They don't want to come into the light because their actions are evil. So, if you have evil actions, how are you going to get into the light when it's so humiliating to enter into the light with those evil actions, even evil thoughts, whatever it is? How are you going to get into the light? It's too humiliating. That's what Jesus is saying. Lest their deeds be exposed, he says. It's that humiliation that happens from entering into the light with actions that are evil, that is too humiliating and keeps people from entering. But look at this. You cleanse the outside of the cup and dish. Same verb as in 1 John, purge. We get the word catharsis from it. You purge the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. I translated this verse for you, by the way. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, because you are purging from the outside of the cup and of the dish, but from within you are swelling from out of rapturing and incontinence. That's literally what it says. It's, it's harpazo. Or page. It's the same word for rapture that they translate rapture today. So, okay, let's translate it rapture. But you know what? Most of the occurrences in the New Testament are negative about it. We can translate it rapture if you want. The Pharisees were accused of rapturing and of incontinence self-indulgence. Incontinence is what it literally means. You cannot control yourself. You want to indulge yourself more and more with no control. This may be the greatest sin of Americans today. So if you're an American listening, you need to take this to heart. Because if you are participating in the American culture of self-indulgence, incontinence, you're behaving as a Pharisee. You must stop that. You must stop that. I'll read to you a little further. In verse 33, it says, Serpents, brood of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? Jesus says this. You think Jesus was always pink clouds and unicorns to everyone he talked to? No, he talked about hell. He told them that they were going to hell. He said, how can you escape the condemnation of hell when you're doing these things? And I'm going to say to you, as Jesus said to the Pharisees, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? My brothers and sisters, if you really are my brothers and sisters, I wish that you wouldn't go to hell. 
but unfortunately many of you will because you refuse to love the truth and be saved. How can you overcome this kind of thing? It's not by imagining Jesus into your mind, into your life. Imagining Jesus into your life doesn't save you. Affirming what you hear in Sunday school or in youth group or in Bible study, that doesn't save you. Affirming it, it doesn't save you. That doesn't save you. But I'll tell you one thing that you can do, that the Bible does say that you can do. And that is to humble yourself. Humble yourself before the Lord. Squeeze up close alongside God, and He will squeeze up alongside you. It says in Jacob 4, a.k.a. James. Humble yourself. What does that mean? What, is, what do you picture when you hear, humble yourself? Listen, I didn't know either. Because no one around me in the churches could tell me what it meant. They said, well, it's a state of your spirit, right? And so you can be doing anything and humble yourself. Like, well, I don't think that's true. You can be murdering someone and humble yourself while you're murdering them. So it obviously is not true what they're saying. Humility is like throwing yourself on your face, literally on your face before God. The lowest possible point you can get to. Just get on the floor, spread out on your face, and become nothing before God. Tell Him, I'm nothing. Tell Him, I, I realize I'm nothing. Tell Him that if you want to take me now, I'm ready to go. But if you want to keep me here and use me, I'm ready for that too. And just wait. Don't say anything more. Don't, don't say anything more. Just wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. Don't fall asleep. Because many of you are so used to incontinence that if you're not indulging your, yourself and your passions, your, your lusts, then you get bored. And so your flesh shuts down so that hopefully when you wake up, you forgot what you were doing and you go back and start indulging yourself again and performing your incontinence. So you've got to control yourself. Take control of your flesh. That's number one. Number two, humble that flesh and the spirit inside of you before God. Become nothing and wait. Take control of your flesh, humble yourself, and wait. You will be able to stop sin. You will be able to. He was telling the Pharisees to stop sin. He's telling them, cleanse from the inside. Then the outside will be clean. Well, that's what his law was about that Jesus introduced in Matthew. You know that we have a law that we're supposed to be under and obey. I know many of you are going to go, go ape on me, right? Yo! <laughs> Works based salvation. Run away. I'm just telling you what it says here. He says, you've heard it said, you shall not murder. But I say, if you hate your brother in your heart without cause, you've already murdered him. He's moving that boundary back inside you, not on the outside. Because the outside is what the Pharisees were doing. They were only paying attention to the outside. Did I, 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 I didn't murder anyone. I didn't physically murder someone. So I'm not guilty of murder. But that's not what the law was talking about. And Jesus is saying that. And so Jesus is instituting the addition that if we follow that, we fulfill the rest. If we don't hate in our heart, if we don't lust with our eyes, we won't commit adultery physically. If we move it back inside, then we are performing Control of our flesh. Because the control comes from within, not from without. From within. 
And so incontinence is taking control over. And Jesus knew this. And Jesus, his main goal was for you to get control over that incontinence. So you can control your flesh. Because if you're just trying to limit your actions on the outside, but what about everything inside? If you do inside, you won't even get close to murdering someone. You won't even get close to committing adultery because inside is under control. And it says, he who does what is right is righteous just as he is righteous. And Jesus is telling us how. I hope you've made it to the end of this video to hear very specifically how Jesus and John both taught the same thing. Regardless of how many people want to say, oh, works salvation, works based salvation, and put labels on it that are modern labels. They're not from, show me in the Bible where it says works based salvation where it says, here's workspace out, it doesn't mention it even, let alone negatively, it doesn't mention it. In fact, you know from watching my videos that it says that faith without works is dead. You cannot have saving faith without works. If you, if you agree with John MacArthur, you better stop going around saying workspace salvation. Even John MacArthur, video I just watched, he says, there is no doubt at all that we will be judged by our actions. He said that. He said, but we're not saved by our actions. He's a liar there because he just said we're going to be judged by our actions. So we're not saved by only our actions. We're saved by the faith that led to those actions as well. Because our actions as Christians are out of our faith in Jesus Christ. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, your actions must demonstrate that. And when we're judged on the final day, if we've done what is right and we're found righteous, it's because of our faith in Jesus Christ, who through grace was revealed to us as the Son of God, saying that, you must have works to accompany that faith in order to be saved doesn't discount the faith and it doesn't discount Jesus. It's founded upon it and permeated by it. Every action I do throughout the day, I'm thinking of Jesus. I'm talking with the Father. I'm shaping my actions based on my faith from faith to faith throughout the day. There's no way you could look at my life if you were to go around with me throughout the day and say, oh, see, he's, he's just doing what he thinks he should be doing and it has nothing to do with Jesus or his faith in Jesus. Now, you wouldn't say that if you are with me throughout the day every day. You would see this is real faith in Jesus Christ that produces that fruit that you are commanded to produce. And if you don't have that fruit, you will be thrown into the fires of hell.